And now, Signature Dish, a WETA original series. Today on Signature Dish, let there be breakfast. Cheers to a great breakfast. Cheers. Cheers. We'll get the day started with some South Texas tradition. So this is a labor intensive process right here. It's a labor of love and that's exactly why we do it. Enjoy a rustic take on a true Belgian original. Here you need the crunch and the caramelization, but the inside of the waffle is still gonna be nice and fluffy. That's excellent. And dig into a breakfast sandwich that packs in a world of flavor. We knew we wanted something that was gonna be light, that was gonna be fluffy, that was gonna be delicious and cheesy, so. Uh, Those are all words that I like to hear. Right? I'm Seth Tillman, WETA producer and DC native, and I love good food. That's why I'm traveling to restaurants across the DMV. At each stop, looking for the one thing you just gotta try. That signature dish. I'm kicking things off in my old stomping ground, DC's Mount Pleasant neighborhood. Across the street from where I used to live is La Tejana, a wildly popular spot slinging breakfast tacos from deep in the heart of Texas. I was born and raised in the Rio Grande Valley, the RGV. So breakfast tacos from as long as I can remember have always been a huge part of my life. I'm from the Northeast. I had never been to Texas my whole life. But I went down there, when, uh, we started dating long distance, and she sent me out to get breakfast tacos. And I was like, breakfast tacos, like what are those? I went and picked them up. And I remember having a moment where it was just like, Oh my God, where have these been my whole life? I ended up moving to DC in 2018, and I quickly realized that there was nowhere to buy breakfast tacos here, and I was shocked. I was sad and also just mad. So La Tejana was really born out of a necessity. At La Tejana, it all starts with a great tortilla. We knew from the jump that the tortilla had to be flour and it also had to be homemade. It's almost like a soul food for that part of the world. The tortilla is the foundation. None of the other stuff that really matters if the tortilla is not homemade. So we actually spent a year perfecting the tortilla. And once we felt comfortable with what we had, we had to work on the filling. So we figured out migas, we figured out bean and cheese, we figured out bacon, egg and cheese, just the staples. One thing that you can usually expect to find at the shop is a line out the door. We have been so incredibly lucky to have been supported by the Mount Pleasant community. It's incredible, the diversity, but everybody is so nice and they're so grateful that we're here. Even people that maybe have never been to Texas, but understand the importance of the breakfast taco. And people that had visited Texas are like, I haven't had these in years. People can come in, they can have a conversation, they can pick up their coffee, and we send them on their way. And you can just tell when they pick up that bag, they feel like they won. They're like, yes. Since the restaurant opened after I moved away, I'm heading back to Mount Pleasant to see what all the buzz is about. Ana Maria. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Gus, too. hey. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Love coming back to Mount Pleasant. I think it's really cool that you guys have brought a little flavor of Texas right here to Mount Pleasant Street. Well, Texas is a huge state, so I wouldn't go that far. We're specifically from the RGV, the Rio Grande Valley, which is the birthplace of the breakfast taco. So these are the legit breakfast tacos. Super legit, yes. <laughs> and what separates an RGV taco from everything else? So it's all about the tortilla. So we make a house-made flour tortilla for every one of our breakfast tacos. Ana and I spend like a year trying to perfect this recipe and practicing different ratios of shortenings and flour. And we spend many times making it ourselves, starting in our home kitchen across the street. Uh, before moving to a ghost kitchen and out our own brick and mortar. And after a long time of doing it ourselves, we finally have a whole team that makes it for us. Yeah, and the crew's actually making them right now. Do you want to go check it out? Let's do it. All right, let's go. All right, so this is where the magic happens. This is where we make the tortillas. <laughs> all right, and these are flour tortillas, not corn. That's right, all flour. And what flavor is a homemade tortilla gonna give you over, you know, store-bought? Well, unless you want your taco to taste like a flip-flop, uh, then that's basically 
This is what you gotta do. Enough said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so what are the steps in this process here? First, uh, when the team comes in, they have to make the masa. And so I can't tell you what goes in the masa or I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so after the masa is made, then they start to portion them and roll them into balls, which are then weighed out. And then the last step is we are taking the balls and we're putting them in our tortilla press, which Par cooks the tortilla, spits it out into the plancha, and then we finish cooking them off and they're ready to be made into tacos. All right, so this is a labor-intensive process right here. Yes, it's a labor of love, and that's exactly why we do it, because it is really the most pillowy, malleable, chewy, a uh, perfect vessel for a breakfast taco. <laughs> Love that, and uh, I'm almost afraid to ask, but how many of these tortillas are you making like every week? So anywhere between 5,500 and 6,000 tortillas go out a week. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I cannot wait to try one of these. All right, well let's take these tortillas and then Gus can make us some tacos. That sounds awesome. All right. All right. We come bearing fresh tortillas, Gus. All right. Nice Let's do and it. hot, straight from the plancha. <clears throat> so, uh, what's the uh, what's the signature taco that you're putting together today? So we're gonna do our best seller, which is the nine five six taco. The nine five six. So the nine five six is my area code in McAllen, Texas, in the RGV where I grew up. So a little shout out to home. A little shout out always. <laughs> I love that. So, Gus, how do you put this thing together? So we're gonna take our homemade tortillas. Um, so we'll lay them down here. And then first things first, we do a little bed of refried beans. So we make our refried beans fresh in house every day. Are these, so, uh, we got a little lard in these things? Definitely got a little leftover bacon grease in these for nice, sure. Nice, nice. And so. Next staple. And then from there, we hit it with some uh, cheesy scrambled eggs. Nice. Ooh, looks fluffy. I feel like, you know, a place that scrambles their eggs well, that's an important thing. From there, we do fried potatoes. Get a little dollop of fried potatoes in every one. You're gonna skimp on uh, Oh, don't skimp on the potatoes. I need. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, That's the amount of papas I was looking for. There. Yeah, papita. <laughs> and then bacon. So full slice of bacon on every taco. And then uh, sit with a little queso. So this is our house-made queso drizzle. Makes it a little bit decadent. I know people in, in Texas are really particular about their queso. Yeah, so our queso has the best ingredient in the world, Velveeta. Of course. And then we mix it in with Monterey Jack cheese and then three different chiles, Serrano, Poblado, and Guajillo. So you get a little kick in your queso as well. Yeah, that's right. All right, I like that. And uh, Gus, did you ever imagine you'd become a taquero here in Washington, D.C.? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am. I'm completely married to the lifestyle at this point. It's <laughs> really taken to it, I can see. Would you like to try one? Uh, there we go. I'd love to try one. Thank all you. All the work that's gone into this, all the care, all the love. Pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah, no, if it doesn't feel like something in your hand, then it's not right. No, no, we're talking to the substantial taco right here. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mm. Never gets old. That is just first rate. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, the tortillas. They have that little bit of chew. They're so soft and pliable in all those ingredients. I mean, how can you go wrong? A little crunch from the papitas. Yes. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah, oh. definitely go for like the contrast and the textures. And I'm seeing some more beautiful salsas right here. Yeah, so these are our house salsas. So just like the tortillas, it uh, wouldn't be a legit taqueria if you didn't make all your salsas from scratch. For every order, you're going to automatically get a cilantro crema and a charred tomato, which is a classic roja. And then we have our a la carte salsas. So this is a creamy avocado tomatillo, which is on the medium side. And then we have our habanero salsa, which is on the spicier side. Let's give it a little spicier kick today, why not? Which one's your favorite? So my favorite is definitely the habanero, but I would say the cilantro crema is a very close second. I'm sure you're not gonna go wrong mm -mm. <laughs> with any of these salsas. Well, now I understand <laughs> what all the hype is about. You guys are killing it. I wish you guys had been open when I lived in Mount Pleasant, but I'm really glad you're here now, and I cannot wait to come back. Thank you so much, Steph. We can't wait to see you at the shop soon. My next stop takes me way up the Potomac to Poolsville, Maryland, a town nestled in the middle of Montgomery County's farm country. 
That's where you'll find Locals Farm Market, a sprawling bakery, market, and restaurant built inside and around a historic home in the center of town. We decided to open Locals Farm Market because I wanted to be able to get a decent latte in Poolsville. So in order to make that happen, we opened up. That's not the true story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my version of the story of why we opened was that we wanted to, to start a place that would elevate the town and attract people in conversation. Poolsville is a quintessential small town in an agricultural community. It's got a sense of place, it's got history, and it's got a great community. We wanted to make sure our restaurant reflected that. So we bought this perfect house in the middle of town. Dave and Sandy, they really wanted this spot because it's really just the center of Poolsville. So this was the spot. There was no second choices. And once you find it, you don't want to leave. And we have a lot of people walking through constantly to see who's here and who they can sit down and have coffee with. And we have a lot of that going on all day. It all starts with breakfast. And it all starts with bre good breakfast. <laughs> Chef Jason Smith helms the locals' kitchen. We searched not just in Poolsville for a chef, put the word out, interviewed, interviewed, had some very creative people come in here, and then Chef Jason's resume came along. And not only was he from Poolsville, but really what sold him was he started at Staub's Country Inn, which was a treasured classic country place. Their fried chicken was the best. So we brought him in and we're thrilled. I grew up in Poolsville. I've lived here for almost 30 years now. Coming here to Locals has just been a dream come true. To be a part of the community and cook for friends and family has been great. David. Hi. Welcome to Locals. Thank you, Sandy. What a pleasure. Thanks. Great to see you. <laughs> what a beautiful space we're standing in right now. Thank you very much. This is the um, the Vera Stevens house. It's an 1840 historic home that we converted to a restaurant and farm market uh, bakery. And this is a place where people can come and get a cup of coffee and sit down to eat? That's right. Run into all their friends. That's why we call it Locals. Well, of course. And what is it that you guys are preparing today? Today we'll make our signature dish, uh, chicken and waffles. It all starts in a bakery. If you want to follow me now, now I can show you the heart and soul of our restaurant. Let's check it out. <laughs> oh, wow. This is the bakery where it all started. Two years ago, at the beginning of COVID, we opened the bakery and we sold coffees and, and baked goods outside for two years while we renovated. Including, this is where we make the dough for our Liege waffles. And Chef Jason right now is actually in the kitchen next door, putting it all together if you want to take a look. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And to be honest, our waffles make others look like amateurs. <laughs> all right, well, I'm sold. Catch you guys <laughs> back at the table. Chef. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've been assured by Sandy and David that the waffles you're making today are, are going to put others to shame. Tell me about this chicken and waffles dish. There's a few things that make these really unique. We start with a leash style waffle, and that batter, as you can see, is way different than any you've ever made at home, correct? Yeah, this looks like almost like a dough that's sort of had time to rise and almost set. Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost is that there's yeast in this batter. Secondly, the pearled sugar, which is going to caramelize once it's in the iron. And then third, just the region it's from, being from Liege uh, inside of Belgium, uh, really just sets these apart. So this yeah. is like the true Belgian waffle right yep. here. OK. And this pearl sugar, is that the little uh, white bits that I'm seeing in the edge of the dough there? That is. And once we get these into the iron, you're going to see how they really caramelize and create that texture. The idea of the Liege waffle is that you don't necessarily need maple syrup with it, uh, which is great. So you know, a lot of times I even refer this to as a street waffle. Because when I first joined Locals, we used to just serve these out of a bag. So you could just like kind of walk down the street and enjoy the waffle. That's um, the European way to do it. Yeah. All right, but I know for our great chicken and waffles, the waffle's only half the battle. Uh, tell me about this chicken here. Yeah, so for the chicken, what we have here is a boneless, skinless chicken thigh. We start off by first pounding these out a little bit so we can get really nice, even cooking. We allow this chicken to sit in the juice of uh, some pickles for over 24 hours. Pickle yeah. juice as your marinade? Yeah. All right, well, that's, that's new to me, but I'm excited to see what flavor that brings. Yeah, so from there, we take the chicken out uh, and we dredge it into some buttermilk. That's nice and thick. That's going to help get the breading to adhere a little bit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So this is an all-purpose flour, and it's uh, the cornstarch, which will help it get its crispiness, paprika, 
uh, some thyme, black pepper, salt. A lot, and, lot of flavors. A lot of flavors, this. yeah. Nice. yeah. Now this is nicely breaded up. I'm just gonna take this over to the fryer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just fry it up at 350 for about five, six minutes. I'm looking to get this chicken nice and golden brown and crispy. So while that chicken's in the fryer, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, Liege waffle batter and we're gonna um, get that into our, our iron. And to finish this dish off, we're gonna take some house spice. Some uh, nice green onions. And then we're gonna go ahead and sit down and enjoy these chicken and waffles. All right, guys, what a beautiful setting to be able to enjoy this food. Normally, I'm asking a chef what kind of cocktail we're drinking, but uh, this is breakfast, so uh, what's the coffee of choice? Well, this is my cocktail of choice, the honey cinnamon latte, local signature latte. Oh, a signature latte, love that. It's made with local honey from up the road. It's got locally roasted espresso, and the mug is made by a local potter, handcrafted just for us. A triple thread of local, <laughs> right here at Locals. Cheers to a great breakfast. Cheers. 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 Mm, delicious. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to start with the waffles. You told me they don't need any maple syrup, so uh, I'm going to put these to the test. Okay. <laughs> That's excellent. I mean, that really tastes like a baked good, more than most waffles that I'm used to. But I always do love a little sugar, so I'm gonna have to dip this uh, this <laughs> waffle in the uh, in the maple syrup this time. Now you know that maple syrup is from Maryland, of course. <laughs> I did not know this maple syrup was from Maryland. I didn't even know they make maple syrup in Maryland. They do. This one's from Garrett County. And don't be afraid to pick it up. Um, they are street wobbles. Okay, just do a little dip. All right. Is that the preferred method of eating here at locals? Absolutely. I think it is for the waffles. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, but I gotta try this chicken as well. For sure. Pickle brine for 24 hours. That is terrific. Oh, the way the paprika and those other savory spices play so nicely with those sweet Liege waffles. That's great. And you're using some uh, some old Poolsville fried chicken secrets to make this recipe? That's right, that's right. I just uh, I started my career right down the road at Stops Country Inn and uh, I really benchmarked this chicken around that. But I wanted to take it up a notch, so uh, I decided to go ahead and pickle this chicken. So I hope you're picking that some, some of that up during your, during your meal today. That sharp pickling flavor comes through really nicely. And did you ever guess that your culinary career would bring you right back here to your hometown <laughs> cooking for your friends and neighbors? I know this is definitely a blessing for sure. Just grateful that Dave and Sandy gave me a, like a stage to, um, to perform on here locally. <laughs> it's all about local here. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time up here in Poolsville. Um, but I'm really glad to know that there's a place I'll be able to come back to time and time again to try this dish. Can't wait to see you again. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm grabbing my last breakfast in D.C.'s Navy Yard. Due south of the Capitol Building is Any Day Now, an all-day restaurant serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner from celebrated chef and restaurateur Tim Ma. Grew up in a family of restaurateurs, and really the drive was to get me out of the restaurants, and so they succeeded with every one of my cousins except for me. After training and working as an electrical engineer, Tim turned his attention to food, opening the first of his many restaurants in Vienna, Virginia in 2009. As like a chef who didn't grow up in the restaurant industry, there were no boundaries around what I was doing because I didn't know them. But like kind of the consistent line that um, held it all together was this Asian influence just because that's, that's what I knew, that's what I grew up around. During the pandemic, Tim opened up Lucky Danger, a Chinese takeout spot where he first worked with chef Matt Sperber. I went to start working with Tim at Lucky Danger, got a awesome crash course at Chinese takeout, which is something I've always loved eating, but I had no idea how to actually cook. In 2023, Matt and Tim turned their attention to breakfast. Something that we've ignored for a long time as chefs is that we typically don't eat breakfast. I've never run a, a diner or a breakfast restaurant before. Like a very specific thing that I, I think it leads to success is like being really good at one thing rather than being like okay at a lot of things. And so we took that mantra and we started to think about like what can we just be really good at and that's all we need to serve. At any day now, that one thing became a breakfast sandwich served on a Chinese scallion pancake. The sandwich comes with three options for fillings, bacon, sausage, or kimchi, all made in-house. 
Tim is the one who had the original idea for the Scallion Pancake Breakfast Sandwich. And then, you know, I kind of was like, okay, like that sounds delicious. How do we do that? It took about four or five months of research and development to get the product that we're serving now. But every single component on that sandwich has been thought out. It looks so simple, but like us being fine dining chefs, the technique that went behind it with the influence from like being Asian American, with growing up around McDonald's and loving just like, you know, the sausage, egg and cheese and the putting that in something that we're familiar with, I think has just really paid off. Jeff. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for uh, welcoming me in here to uh, any day now. Uh, I love a good breakfast sandwich. Mm -hmm. I've never had one on a scallion pancake before though. Uh, how's that gonna work? So we're gonna start by making the pancake itself. We have some of the dough right here for it. Uh, so this is what we call hot water dough. When we make this dough, we use water that is nearly boiling. And what that allows for is the dough to be stretchier, mm. more elastic. First step, we do need to roll it out by hand a little bit. So we kind of get it uh, a little bit thinner and we just want to just, you know, make sure that we can actually get it, kind of get it through the guides in here. And we'll sort of run it through there a couple times um, to make sure that's kind of even as it's coming out. And then once we get that, we'll just start adjusting it. Yeah. So and each time just getting a little thinner. Right. Yeah. Every time we're doing it, we're getting a little bit thinner. All right, looks like we're making ravioli here. But... A little bit, right? Yeah. So I think here, sometimes it gets a little sticky, so. This is just regular flour. When you're making as many of these as we do, it can really ruin your morning. <laughs> <laughs> Get a stuck pasta machine. You don't want a line of angry customers out the door. No. So once we kind of get it down to like this thinner layer, you can kind of see through it a little bit. Oh yeah. So we're gonna go to the next step. And that's what we refer to as lamination. So really simply what that means is that we're just gonna start creating layers so that when you bite into it, you're gonna get like a nice crunch, but you're also gonna see a little bit of chewiness in there as well. And that's and that's what we're going for. So the first part of that step, uh, we're gonna take the, this is just a toasted sesame oil. We're just gonna take the sesame oil and we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna brush a thin layer on the entire pancake. It's got a really nice down. color in that container it does, there too. Yeah, and it smells great. It actually, I can smell it all the way from over here. Um, uh, we'll take uh, scallions and do a sprinkle of those across the dough. So. Uh, the next thing we'll do, we're going to take uh, just a knife and we're going to cut this. So cut about there, about there, and take this, ah. stack it on top, and then we're actually going to flip this guy over. So just you're not looking for hundreds of layers here? No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. If we did, you know, we would be here all day and all, all day and all night doing this. And I'm just going to try and work out some of those like air bubbles, and we're just going to try to get it to length, and we are trying to work it down, get it thinner, thinner, thinner. So we're gonna just square up our edges on here and then we're gonna cut it down. So we'll split it, put a little bit more flour on there, set that aside, move on to the next one. It is a lot of work for a single pancake. It is. But I guess it's the, I guess that labor is what makes it all, all worth it in uh, the end. You know, I, I do like to think so. And then what we do, we wind up with our pancake. Obviously, with a, a breakfast sandwich, uh, we got we got the fill-ins to contend with as well, right? That's right. We have a bacon option, a sausage option, and then a kimchi option. Uh, our kimchi is a little bit different in that we keep salted shrimp out of it, and that allows us to, you know, have a vegetarian option. And it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. Uh, the sandwich itself is is pretty heavy, and you'll see you'll see in a little bit. The other really important part in any breakfast sandwich that you're looking for are the actual eggs themselves. You want the steaming route. Something that you will see um, sort of in Chinese cuisine. We knew we wanted something that was gonna be light, that was gonna be floppy, that was gonna be delicious and cheesy. So uh, Those are all words that I like to hear. Right? <laughs> yeah, we'll take some eggs. Oh, you've mastered the one-handed egg crack. Uh, I have I'm, I'm, still by, I'm still working on by it. By necessity, right? <laughs> and we'll add a little bit of a heavy whipping cream in here. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll add in a little bit of cheddar cheese. Season it with a little bit of salt. Season with a little pepper. So then uh, we'll pour the eggs uh, into a greased pan. And from there, we'll put it in our steamer. They'll usually cook for about six or seven minutes uh, until they're light and fluffy. From there, what we'll wind up doing is assembling the sandwich itself. And that starts by putting cheese on both sides of the pancake, putting one of those steamed eggs on there, a layer of special mayonnaise that we make here in-house, put our toppings on there, 
I'm gonna go ahead and make you one of the kimchi ones, and then we'll close it up and cook it on the flat top. And then we'll serve it with a side of chili crisp that we make in house. Matt, Tim, thought I knew what a breakfast sandwich looks like. Apparently I was wrong. I cannot wait to try this. That's just outrageous. <laughs> that egg is so nicely steamed. The kimchi has a nice, bright flavor. Wonderful job. And Matt, I, I get it with the lamination, those layers of dough. You know, when you look at it on the plate, it looks like it's gonna be super crispy. I mean, it has a nice chew to it, though. It does, yeah. The outer layers certainly are nice and crispy and kind of have that shatter when you bite into it, but those inner layers do have some of that chew. Um, and I think it's it's a great balance. Tim, tell me about this uh, this chili crisp. Sauce making is a very important piece of Chinese cuisine, so, you know, obviously chili crisp is so hot right now. And so Matt put together, like, I think one of the best versions out there. We came up with a chili crisp that's not too spicy. So we decided to use like a milder chili flake. We took a little bit of the actual kimchi and blended that into there. And that sort of delivers uh, a lot of savoriness to it. And I think it pairs very, very well with the sandwich. Yeah, you don't want to really start your day with just a, <laughs> a kick in the pants from no. spice. And this is a good example of your whole approach too, with like, you know, bringing in Asian influences, American influences, putting them all together. Yeah, we are the human version of the sandwich. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times it's tough to kind of figure out what the signature dish that we're gonna feature at a restaurant is, but uh, it's a lot easier when it's the only dish. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Focusing on one dish really allowed us to be really good at it. I think what has been accomplished is like something that looks very simple and like every component having so much depth just yeah. from the process of it has like combined to make something pretty special. And so it's it's been fun to see people react to it. And, uh, kimchi, sausage, bacon, rapid fire question time, what's your favorite? The kimchi as well. Yeah, just like so much depth in it. I'm uh, partial to the sausage. I'm sure they're all absolutely wonderful. This made my morning. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. To find out more about great food in the Washington metro area, visit weta.org slash signature dish.